Hello friends, this video on understanding numbers part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we learned how to handle bigger numbers, now let us look at some applications of larger numbers. That how do we make use or where do we use such huge numbers? Now there are certain sectors where we often make use of such larger numbers. For example, when we talk about the population of a city, forget about the population of a country or the population of the entire world. Even if you talk about the population of a small locality, uh, you see that it turned out to be in thousands or in lakhs. When you talk about something in finance, Money matters. You, you buy something, you save something, you buy a house, you buy a car, you do some savings in your bank. So you talk about huge numbers. You talk about something like 5 lakhs, 50 lakhs. Um, you talk about huge numbers. You talk about sale in a shop. That Okay, how many bundles of notebooks did the shopkeeper sell in a year? So that's again a huge number or how much profit or how much loss did the shopkeeper make. So they are also you, you talk of huge numbers. You talk about distances, maybe the distance between two cities. So that's also again a big number it's because two cities are not very near. Or if you talk about the distance between two countries, again, they are big numbers. You talk about weights, heavy weights. So there are a lot of places where we very commonly use larger numbers. Now, when we talk of these larger numbers or when we use these larger numbers to measure some quantity, for example, if we are talking about distance, we say that distance between two cities is, let's say, some 700 kilometers. So not only the number 700 defines it alone, you also need an unit to define the distance. For example, to define the distance, we used a unit like kilometer. Now, when we talk about units, an important concept comes into picture and that is conversion of units. Now, there are various units available to measure any quantity, whether it is distance, whether it is weight, whether it is volume. So to measure any quantity, we have certain specified units. In these units also, we have smaller units, we have larger units. Smaller units to define smaller quantity, larger units to define larger quantities. For example, let's say uh, we talk about the distance between two cities, Bangalore and Chennai. And let's say that the distance between these two cities is approximately, I mean, they are not very near, right? So the distance is huge. It is not the distance between your house and your school, which might be quite near. Now, since you are measuring a longer distance or a larger distance, you need a larger unit. Now here we have so many units and we make use of the bigger unit that is kilometer and we say that the distance is approximately 600 kilometers. So that's just an approximate number. So that's, that's how we define the distance between two cities like Bangalore and Chennai. Now you might ask, so why do, do we really need to have so many units? Yes, we need them because not every time we are measuring such big distances. Now, sometimes we also might need to measure, uh, say, a very small distance, maybe the thickness of a, a page. Now, the thickness of a paper that is like really, really thin, it is very small, that, that distance is going to be very, very small. So that is when we make use of smaller units like millimeter. So now these are the variety of units that we have and depending upon how much big or how much small the number is, we can make use of each of these units and these units can be converted from one unit to another. Let's say 600 kilometer. If I want, I can write 600 kilometer in terms of meter as well. So it is just that 600 kilometer would mean 600 in 2000 meters, basically this much meters. Similarly, if I want to write the same unit in millimeters, we can even do that. Just that the number will become very, very huge. And it is very difficult to remember or to write such a big number. And that is why we make use of bigger units instead. So that the number remains small, like here, the number is just 600, but the unit is kilometer, which is a bigger unit. 
so basically we are defining the same quantity but in a more convenient way right okay so now the important concept here is how do we convert from one unit to another so that is another important thing that we will learn here so here the units that we have are milli, centi, deci, meter or liter, deca, hecto, kilo. Now how do we call these units? Now let's say that when you are measuring length, length would mean maybe distance, height, width, anything that will all come under length. So when you are measuring length, your unit would be meter and in that case this becomes millimeter which is written as mm, this becomes centimeter which is written as cm, this becomes decimeter, this is meter, this is decameter, this is hectometer and this is kilometer. So that is how your units are. Now let's say you are measuring volume which is in liters. So in that case your meter becomes liter and therefore this becomes milliliter, centiliter, deciliter, decaliter, hectoliter and kiloliters right so similarly when you uh, measure weight then you measure in terms of grams so you have grams you have milligrams you have centigrams you have kilograms hectograms and so on so that's how the unit varies depending on which quantity you are measuring whether it is volume or it is length or it is weight so that varies right so now the question is what about the conversion now, even before conversion you might ask that how am I going to remember so many units milli, centi, decimeter, deca, hecto, kilo. So how are you going to remember this series now it is very important not, now it is not only important to remember the names it is also important to remember the order because this order is very crucial if you remember the order you will be very easily able to convert from one unit to another. Because that is our final agenda that if I have to convert a some amount from kilometer to meter, how do I do that? Or if I have to convert something from milliliter to kiloliter, how do I do that? So in order to do this conversion easily, it is very important that you remember this sequence milli, centi, decimeter, deca, hecto, kilo. So how do I remember this? So for that, let us make use of a memory tip which will help you to remember this. Now this is something which is very relevant to children of your age. Now if I ask you to remember or memorize this milli, centi, decimeter, deca, hecto, kilo that might sound really boring and difficult to remember. Now instead of this, you can just remember this sentence which might be true for a lot of you. McDonald, I'm sure all of you know what McDonald is. So McDonald is the most dearest to happy kids. Now do you think that this is an easier sentence for you to remember? Yes, I think so because McDonald's is a favorite to a lot of you. Now, if you remember this sentence, it is like McDonald, MCD, is the most dearest to happy kids. So here M is for milli, centi, deci, meter, deca, hecto, kilo. And that's how you can remember the, remember the units because if you remember K, K will remind you of kilo. H will remind you of hecto. M will remind you of milli. So McDonald is the most dearest to happy kids. And that's how you remember milli, centi, decimeter, deca, hecto, kilo. Now you know these names. It is just that you often tend to forget the order in which they are placed. And why is it important to remember the order? That's because if you remember the order, so we know that the smaller unit as is at this end. So milli is the smallest unit and kilo is the biggest unit. So this is basically arranged in an order. So milli is the smallest. Next is centi. So centi is smaller than deci. Deci is smaller than meter. Meter is smaller than deca. Deca is smaller than hecto and hecto is smaller than kilo. So basically kilo is the biggest of all of these and milli is the smallest of all of this. So since it is arranged in an increasing order, so it is important to remember the order. Now let's come to the conversion. 
Now, every time you want to convert something from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, let's say you want to convert something from centimeter to decameter or centimeter to hectometer. So basically, you are moving down, right? So from up to down. So whenever you are moving down, what you do? You need to divide. So this is a simple rule that you need to remember. Whenever you are moving down, that is whenever you are converting from a unit which is at the top to a unit which is at the down. So if you are doing conversion from centimeter to kilometer, you are basically moving down. And whenever you are moving down, you need to divide. Now you might ask divide by what? Again, that's an important thing. Now for every step, you divide by 10. So let's say from milli to centi. If you want to convert from milli to centi, what you do? You divide the number by 10. If you want to convert from centi to deci, you divide by 10. Now what if you have to convert from milli to deci? So you need to jump two steps. So you basically divide by 100. So the number of zeros increase by one in every step. So for every step, one zero is increasing. And when you are moving down, you are dividing. Just the opposite, when you are moving up, what will you do? As you move up, you will multiply. Multiply by what? Multiply by 10. And again, the number of zeros will keep increasing with every step. So if you want to convert from kilo to hecto, what you do? You multiply by 10. You want to convert from hecto to deca, you multiply by 10. You want to convert from deca to meter, you multiply by 10. If you want to convert from kilo to meter, so you will multiply because you are moving up. And by how many steps are you moving up? 1, 2, 3. So you will multiply by 1, 3 times 0, that is 1000. So you have to multiply by 1000. Similarly, if you want to convert from kilo to deci, so there also you will multiply because you are moving from, moving upward and with what? One, two, three, four steps, therefore four zeros. So you will multiply it by 10,000. So that is the concept of converting, conversion of units and I hope you will remember this. So what are the important points that you need to remember for conversion of units? First thing is remember the order of the units and for that you remember McDonald is the most dearest to happy kids. That is milli, centi, decimeter, deca, hecto, kilo. Right? Now whenever you move down, you divide. Divide by what? Divide by 10, 100, 1000 depending on. So the number of zeros will depend on how many jumps you need to make. So if you are jumping from milli to meter. So how many jumps from milli to meter? One, two, three jumps. So you will divide by thousand because you are coming down. So divide by and three zeros because there are three jumps. Simple. Similarly, if you are converting from a bigger unit to a smaller unit, that is if you are moving up, you need to multiply. Multiply by what? Multiply by 10, 100, 1000. Again, the number of zeros will be decided by the number of jumps that you make. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.